Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our virtual tour of Utah State University. My name is Mariah Spencer, and I'm the recruiter for the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences here at Utah State. We're excited to show you our facilities and teach you more about the programs that we offer. Please feel free to ask any questions you may have throughout the tour in the chat, or we'll, we'll open it up for questions at the end of the tour as well. So without further ado, let's head out to our airport. Hi everybody, my name is Madison Leak. I'm a junior here at Utah State University's uh, College of Ag and Applied Sciences, studying agricultural communications and journalism with an emphasis in social media. I grew up here in the Valley, so when the time came to choose where to go to school, Utah State was kind of high on my priority list. Um, as I toured other places, nothing felt right like Utah State. Um, the atmosphere, the herd mentality, and the student life here really is unmatched. Um, and the College of Ag and Applied Sciences had the perfect degree for me. Um, and I've loved my three years here and I'm, I'm kind of sad I'm going to be leaving soon. But um, today I'm out at Logan Regional Airport, which is home to our aviation department. And today here with me is Taylor and he's going to talk a little bit about the avi aviation department and some of the opportunities um, here. So here you go. Hi, my name is uh, Taylor Shank. I'm the chief flight instructor uh, here at Utah State over the helicopter program. So here in our aviation department, we have... Um, about four different emphasis in uh, the aviation. So we have a, a professional pilot degree, which is a four-year bachelor's degree, which you can get an emphasis in either helicopters like we have here, and which is I'm over, or in the fixed wing program, which we have some over here as well. Uh, we also have uh, drones and maintenance as well. So you can really pick which path of aviation fits best for you. Um, so here to talk specifically about the helicopter side, so we, uh, we have been here at Utah State since about 2017. Um, currently we have about seven helicopters. And um, the good thing that I like about our program here is that it's, uh, we're relatively smaller compared to some other university uh, programs with helicopters, which really gives us like a, a small close knit group type of build. Um, one of the things that we, um, we really enjoy about flying in this area is that we have some high high uh, altitude training as well as uh, mountains all all around us. So it makes for a really fun training environment and a great place to fly every day. Uh, one of the one of the big advantages that we have in this program too is we have uh, both VA students and private pay, so we get people coming from all over the nation, which really um, help us like diversify our our studies and where exactly students want to end up and where they came from and where they want to go. So here we, we feel like we have a lot to offer and it's, uh, a, you know, it's a great part of being, it's great to be a part of Utah State and uh, helping the next generation of future helicopter pilots. Um, awesome. So we had one question come in um, and they are wondering what separates Utah State's aviation program from others in the nation? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things that we do here um, at Utah State, which um, draws people to to this area and to universities in the in the first place. So one of the big draws about training in Utah um, is we have high altitude training. So the majority of pilots are trained at sea level. Um, so by training at a higher altitude, it opens you up for more job opportunities because you have high high altitude training which is just harder environment to fly in. Plus we have the mountains right, you know, five minutes away. That really gives another dynamic situation um, that you have to learn to operate an aircraft in. And then with, uh, with the university program too, we offer a four year bachelor's degree program, which most, which most flight schools do not. And by going through university, you not only get a bachelor's degree program plus your pilot search, but it opens up opportunities for um, financial aid options, which uh, some private flight schools wouldn't have the option to do. Uh, we also expect, uh, accept VA benefits. So, you know, a lot of people coming out of the military will choose, you know, choose flight schools. And we're able to, to train, you know, uh, people coming out of the military that want to be helicopter pilots, as well as bringing on, you know, traditional university students that are, that are paying like out of pocket and privately. Hi, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Breeding, and I'm here at the Equine facility here at Utah State University. Um, I am majoring in animal, dairy, and veterinary sciences with an emphasis in biotechnology. And within the animal, dairy, and veterinary sciences major, we have different emphasis and equine science is one of them. 
I'm gonna flip my camera around and show you our indoor arena. This was built in 2016, so it's fairly new. It's a really nice facility that we have here. You can see we have a student, a student right now in class, but I will just quickly show you around. Um, these big windows are really nice because we can open them and it makes it really nice when there's a lot of students in here working with their horses. There's also big mirrors in the back along the wall. And that's really nice for students as they're learning proper riding technique because when you are on the horse, your body perception is kind of thrown off. So students are able to look in the mirror and see what their body is actually doing and apply proper technique based on that. We have a few round pins in here and I'm gonna show you we this new stall building was just barely built and finished in 2019. It added an additional 51 stalls along with wash racks, student lounges, and indoor tack sheds, which is really nice for our students that come here. Essentially, um, students just, when they come to their classes out here on the farm, they just have to park their car outside and then they're indoors for the rest of the time. Here's an indoor tack shed that students are able to keep their supplies that they need while they're out here working with their horses during class and outside of class as well. We have some classes here that students come right from, they can come right from campus. They come to our equine facility and they can learn things like proper riding technique. We have beginner and advanced equine rider classes. Um, we also have some equine reproduction classes and equine management classes. And our, a lot of our equine students say that equine reproduction was their favorite class because if you know anything about equine reproduction, you know that it's very intense and there's a lot to it. And students are able to come and do hands-on learning in some of our other barns that have our mares and are able to do things like artificially inseminate horses, um, which is really important tool to have, especially in the racehorse world. And along with that, a lot of our students will move on to study equine reproduction and they get internships in Kentucky with the race horsing programs, which is really interesting. And a lot of them uh, really get excited about that because that's kind of a once in a lifetime uh, once in a lifetime opportunity for students to take advantage of. Another program that we have here is the equine therapy program. And this one has become very popular in the past few years and students are able to take classes um, and so that they are able to help children and veterans that take advantage of the therapeutic um, that they're the therapeutics that a horse offers and they're able to bring students here children and veterans and they're able to learn um, and build that connection with the horse students in our equine program really love it here and they enjoy it and if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so the one question that we had for you is um, what equine clubs are offered at Utah State? Yeah, so uh, we have a few equine clubs. One of them, this one is really exciting. And basically at Utah State, you when you take equine classes, you're able to pick a wide variety of classes. And you can uh, basically take classes and learn how to, how to help a mare full and so you're there at the beginning of that full life cycle. And then um, you are able, students are able to take classes to train these horses. And every year in April, we have an auction. So students train the horses and buyers come and buy these horses from trained students or from students that have trained them. And a lot of times students will get job offers because they do such a great job training these horses. If that is the only question, I hope to guys, see you guys here at Utah State. Thanks for that, Cheyenne. All right. So my name is Lex Peterson. I am from Plain City, Utah, and I am now a junior here at Utah State, where I am currently dual majoring in agribusiness and finance. Um, I chose to be an Aggie because I love the campus and how many different programs are offered here. And now my favorite part of being Aggie is just the student life. Um, I've met so many people here, and it's fun to participate in things like the intramural sports and go to big sporting events. So with that, I'd now like to talk to you guys about our ASTE shop here at USU. So I'm gonna go for a quick walk. So, as you can see here, this is where most of our agricultural systems and machinery classes are held. Um, we love having a shop this big. 
because not a whole lot of other colleges have it. And with that, it's nice to come in in the winter and work on all of our projects. So and then surrounding the shop, you can see like back here, we have smaller classrooms that break off from the shop and offices. So like back here, the lights are off and they aren't turning on right now, but you can see like it's a small, small engine machinery classroom. Um, and like if you look around here, like a lot of these tractors, you can see that they're like individual student projects. So like when you come here and study agricultural machinery or ag systems, you get a lot of hands-on experience working on these tractors. They're all torn apart. And uh, if we come down here, one thing that helps us a lot here is we have a crane system that runs the entire span of the shop. So we can use that to lift any kind of equipment we want. Hopefully you can hear me, there's still a welding class going on now. So if you look up here, let's see. There's our crane system. It runs the entire span of the shop and can cover anything. We use it to pick up engines, wheels, stuff like that. Um, down there, there is a welding class in session right now. So we have all of our welding stuff in here too, so that's nice. Um, like I said before, the students that spend most of their time here are part of the ag mechanics or agricultural systems class. Um, these programs are the only one of their kind in Utah, and we have the only uh, ag mechanics program in the Western US here. So because of that, we get a lot of uh, outside companies come in and they'll teach classes here specifically. Like as you can see here, here's a tractor that they're working on. These outside classes or outside companies will come in and specifically teach classes. And with that, we have really good job placement just from working with them and them seeing our students. And so, yeah, the students are in here, they'll cover everything from agricultural systems, like electrical systems and hydraulics. They'll study uh, like forage equipment. So like hanging stuff and yeah. So with that, I'll wrap up my portion. And does anyone have any questions? Okay, we had one question come in for you and it is what are some places you can work at after getting your degree? All right, so that's a good question. With our really great job placement that we have in this program, a lot of our students go on to work at like implement dealers or they'll go on and work with like John Deere in sales or uh, they'll even work to open their own dealerships, which is pretty cool. Go and work with like John Deere, International, Case, um, Kubota. Um, some of them even go on to uh, work for ranches or farm operations. Yeah, hope to see y'all here soon. Thanks, Lex. Um, so my name's Casey and I'm from Income, Idaho. I'm studying plant science with a minor in hunger and food security studies. And I love being an Aggie. Um, Utah State has been a great place for me to go to school and I absolutely love the atmosphere here. I came here um, because I was offered an academic scholarship and I also took a tour of the campus and I just loved it. It just felt like the right place to be. Uh, my program has been awesome. I've learned so many things and my professors are great and just the people I've met has probably been my favorite thing. Um, so today I'm here at the Aggie Chocolate Factory, kind of see in the back. Um, so I'm just kind of going to show you around the facility um, to start. So this is where we get all of our cocoa beans in. And it's kind of hard to see, but those bags on the wall, they actually show that we get cocoa beans from Ecuador and Belize. And then, um, yeah, this is kind of where they come in and get sorted. And then moving along, here's just the front of the chocolate factory. This is where you can order all of your yummy treats. They also make cheese and truffles, cookies, um, all kinds of different things. But the Chocolate Factory is super cool because it provides hands-on learning experiences for students. So USU actually offers a general class in chocolate making and it um, covers one of those general um, breadth education credits. And it's a really great opportunity for students who are interested in food science or if they want to um, go on into nutrition. They really get the hands-on opportunities. And in the chocolate class, they actually learn about all the different formulas and how to make different um, flavor profiles. And they learn about that in class and actually get to come here to the chocolate factory and apply what they're learning. 
So this is the outside and it's super awesome because it's all um, glass windows. And so the public, when they come in, they can see what's going on, see what the workers are doing. Um, it's the chocolate factory's main focus is research and community outreach. Um, so it's super cool. We're actually the only university in the nation with a fully functioning chocolate factory that goes from bean to bar. And so you can kind of see on the back wall, um, there's just animations up there and it kind of goes through the steps of making chocolate. Um, but chocolate factory is super cool. It actually showcases the nutrition, dietetics and food science department here at Utah State. So we have programs, if you're interested in more like community nutrition or clinical nutrition, the dietetics program is great for that. Or nutrition science kind of focuses more on um, like the cellular level of food. So if you're interested in like really learning about the chemical building blocks of food and then food science like showcased here at the chocolate factory, if you wanna learn about how to make foods um, better tasting, like better textures, um, Utah State definitely has some great hands-on opportunities for you. So that's the Chocolate Factory. Um, what questions do you guys have? Okay, so I also have one question for you that came in, and it is, what is your favorite treat at the Aggie Chocolate Factory? Ooh, that's a great question. I actually love the truffles. The truffles and Aggie Chocolate Factory actually started doing hot chocolate. Um, that cho hot chocolate is definitely my favorite, especially in the winters in Logan, cause it's super cold. So definitely hits the spot on a cold day. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for listening. We hope to see you guys at Utah State. Thanks Casey. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Ritchie and I am studying at Utah State, of course. I'm studying plant science, just like Casey is. I'm here in our greenhouse. Um, and one of the things I really love about being an Aggie is just that the faculty here and all of my professors and the staff, the advisors, everybody cares so much about me and wants me to succeed. And so knowing that as a student really gives you the confidence you need to ask questions and um, push forward and just kind of challenge what, what level you're at of knowledge right now and, and take it a level higher. So I'm in the greenhouse right now, our teaching greenhouse. And let me flip my camera so I can show you what it looks like. So, the teaching greenhouse right now is about half full with plants and we've got another house on the other side of this wall. Um, but I'll stay over here because the fans are going and they're pretty noisy and I want you to be able to hear me. But anyway, the greenhouse um, is a really great opportunity for students to get hands-on learning. So all of these plants right here have been transplanted by students in our greenhouse management class. So the greenhouse management class is open to anybody who is interested in it. It's not only for people who are studying plant science. And basically you come in for a three hour lab once a week and you plant seeds and you transplant into larger containers like you see here. And then at the end of the semester, there's a plant sale for anyone in the community to come and get these plants and then incorporate them into their yard. So that's really cool. We've even got some hanging baskets up here. The greenhouse is also used in the fall for our plant propagation class. So students learn how to graft trees and branches and shrubs and how to take cuttings from plants and turn those into an entirely new plant. So these are really great hands-on skills that students are going to need in the actual industry. And then another really neat thing about our greenhouse is that um, even our intro class, our intro plant class has one activity down at the greenhouse, which is nice because a lot of times intro classes are just lectures. So it's nice to have some hands-on activities and to be able to play around and experience the greenness um, during the uh, winters in Logan. Um, so another really great thing about our greenhouse is that we've got a soil mixer and that's a really great opportunity for students to learn what components need to go into a soilless media mixture and then how to replicate that and how to use a soil mixer, which they'll probably be using if they were to work at, at a large scale greenhouse. And then we also recently just got a new control system and I'll just show you one of the sensors here. So this is really big and exciting for us because the students can actually log in and see the data real time of what's going on in the greenhouse. So we can know what the temperature is, what the humidity is, what the light intensity levels are, and then watch how the greenhouse responds to that to regulate everything. So that's a really cool opportunity for people who are more interested in the technological side of things. And then another really great thing about our greenhouse, although it is off campus a ways, it's down by the stadium, we have a bus system, two buses that come here 
And so it's pretty easy to get back and forth between the main campus and our location down here. So the, the greenhouse is also used by our plant science club and they can do all sorts of plant related things. Sometimes we've done only aquatic plants, sometimes air plants and things like that. So it's just a lot of um, plant related stuff. It's a way for students to get together and to connect. And then this greenhouse also doubles as a shop. So in the fall, we sell apple cider, which was the apples were picked by students and then pressed by students into that cider and it's sold here. Um, and then in the winter, we also sell poinsettias. And then of course, these bedding plants right here will be sold in the spring. So it's a really great opportunity for students who want to get retail experience as well. Um, so yeah, this is our teaching greenhouse. We love it a lot. And what questions do you have? Okay, so the question that came in for you is, what is your favorite thing to grow at the greenhouse? Hmm, my favorite thing to grow. You know, I just love everything. I must say that there are some flowers that are coming out here. I'll show you that are just so cute right now. And you, you, you all need to see them because look at those cute little flowers. So yeah, I'd have to say probably the perennials, these kinds of flowers and plants are one of my favorite things to grow here. Okay. Um, well, if there aren't any other questions, I'll send you on to chance down at the dairy. Go Aggies. Thank you, Nicole. Hey guys, uh, this is Chance Canny. I grew up down in Southern Colorado, um, a little tiny town, a little farming community. Um, I'm a senior here at Utah State University majoring in animal science um, with a minor in ag business. Um, I chose Utah State for a lot of reasons. Um, one, they have so many scholarships, like over 750,000 scholarships for students to apply for. Um, and there's one, really one application for all of those. So it's really easy um, to get scholarships to help you cut the cost of college um, also, the learning here at Utah State is very hands-on, as you're seeing through the different um, facilities that we have for students to get involved and be a part of. Um, but today, I'm going to kind of walk you through the cane dairy here. I'm going to explain some of the special features that we have to offer. So I'm going to begin right over here with the, one of our um, newest additions. It's what we call our R2-D2. These are a little robot that helps us keep the cattle fed. So here you'll see all the cows, they can stick their heads through, they can eat the feed. Sometimes they'll push the feed a little bit too far out into the alley. So R2-D2 comes and he pushes the feed back to the cows so the cows can keep eating. Um, dairy cattle require a lot of food to maintain their, their milk production. So I'm gonna walk through here um, and kind of show you some of the cows we have. Um, on this end, I'm gonna start, we have two different breeds here at the Cane Dairy. This first one is the um, jerseys. These are the brown ones. They're a little smaller in size and they produce about 70 um, or 50 to 70 pounds of milk um, per day. Um, what you would think, well, that's a lot. Well, if you compare our Jersey to our Holstein, that's a young heifer, um, you see there's a very big size difference. Um, these Holsteins, which I'll show you more of them on the other end of the barn, they produce anywhere from 90 to 110 pounds um, of milk per day. Um, the only difference between the two milks is the Jerseys they produce more milk fat than our Holsteins. Our Holsteins produce a more total pounds of milk um, per day. But here in Utah, we get paid on the percentage of milk um, that we're actually able to, to have. So I'm gonna keep walking through. Um, I'm gonna walk you over here to the Holstein side of things um, where we have another, another group of cows. And as I do that, I want you to kind of look around the facilities that we have here. Um, are top of, top of the notch. Um, we're trying to implement basically having all of the newest technology, the highest quality, um, the best livelihood for these dairy cattle um, so we can be an industry leader um, instead of just, you know, another, another dairy out there. Um, Utah State University is the number one college dairy in the nation, which is very impressive um, because it's still a pretty new dairy and this barn has been been here for just a few years and we've made a lot of changes. I'm gonna show you some of those changes, but here's just the dairy cows. As you can tell, they're a lot bigger. They're not as friendly as our jerseys, um, but they still are needed in to feed America. So I'm gonna turn you around. So the next plot we're gonna to go to um, is where the cows get milked. Um, it's really, really loud in that room. So I'm not gonna walk in there, 
um, until I explain what's going to happen and all of that stuff. Right, one second. They're, they're sorting cows, so I got to go through all the gates again. So over here, um, just in the last three years, Utah State has converted all of their student um, students that were hired here to be milkers with this one robot called Lily. Um, Lily here is is a 100% robotic. Um, does the cleaning of the teeth, the milking, um, as well as all of the tracking of the the quality of the milk, the amount of milk, um, and the health of the cows. So here I'm going to show you on one of the cows. They have these little collars on them. Let's see if she'll let me see it. They have these little collars around their neck. And inside there, there's a little microchip. And that microchip keeps track of how much they're eating, how much they're sleeping, um, and, and all of these different um, health factors to make sure our cows are maintaining the best health possible here um, at the farm. Um, all these cows here are also used for a lot of classes. We have our beef management classes, our dairy management classes, um, and a lot of our reproduction for cattle, um, we utilize these cattle. So they're, they're used for a lot of research, a lot of teaching, um, which is a really cool opportunity for students. So I'm gonna give you a closer look here at the robot as it's milking. And I'll walk around to the other side and show you a little bit more about how that works, how it's tracking. Um, but it cleans the teats off, uses lasers to get on the proper teat, um, and then it milks, milks the cow. As you can tell, the cows love it because in the front, they get a little grain ration every time they go in. Um, so it boosts the amount of times the cows want to get milked, um, as well as the total milk production per cow, which makes it very efficient. So I'm going to walk into that room and show you um, a little bit more on that screen, let you watch for a couple minutes, and then I'll answer any questions and explain where all the milk goes and what it's used for. All right, so I hope you guys are able to see that it collects all the milk, um, puts it in a storage tank. That storage tank gets transported um, and used for a lot of different purposes. Um, all of the Aggie Creamery, Aggie Ice Cream, Aggie Chocolate Factory use 100% milk that's produced here at the Cane Dairy. Any of the excess milk that we have is actually sent to a local um, dairy factory that produces it into cheese, milk, ice cream, butter, um, all those good things that we, we love to enjoy. Um, and then they're resold and shipped all over the nation. So you might be able to find some Gosner food um, in, in your area. So keep an eye out for that. And you can know that that came from, that part of it could have come from the Cane Dairy. Um, so that's all I have here at the dairy. What questions do you guys have for me? Okay, so one question came in and they are wondering why USU decided to switch to robotic milkers. So there were a lot of reasons um, that they switched to robotic milking. One is, just labor costs, um, trying to pay the students, the cows needed milked all the time. Um, and through scientific research that they did, they saw that there was a lot of benefits to letting the cows choose when they go and milk. Um, so you can see they're not, right now they're penned away because they're starting to sort cows. Um, but normally the cows can just walk like this one. She's gonna walk and try and squeeze right through here. Um, and that little gate will move. She can walk in um, and get milked. And so since the cows get to choose when they, when they uh, get milked, um, that makes them, one, want to get milked, two, and they're able to produce more milk and be a lot more efficient. So overall, in the big, big scheme of things, it's a lot more cost effective for the entire industry. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope to look, I hope to see you guys here at Utah State. Go Aggies. Thanks, champs. Hi, everyone. My name is Madeline. I am a junior here at Utah State studying dietetics. I'm originally from Minnesota and came all the way to Utah just for Utah State because I knew the hands-on experiences I would get are uncomparable to any other universities here. So I am currently sitting in our Aggie ice cream building. If you guys haven't heard of Aggie ice cream, it is the best ice cream in the West. 
like Chint said, we use the dairy that comes from the cows down at the farm and it brought, gets brought up here to our production facility where students can get a hands-on experience of learning the production of how to make ice cream and the different flavors that go into it. Um, so it really applies to that food science and nutrition science aspect of things. The Aggie Ice Cream Building is right next to the Nutrition and Food Science Building, which highlights our nutrition, dietetics, and food science department. So nutrition science, we have two different programs in the pre-med and the nutrition and the sports nutrition. Pre-med is for those students who are interested in going into medical school, but they take a different route focusing on applicating the science concepts into nutrition. And sports nutrition is for those who are more interested in working with athletes and learning how nutrition affects athletic performance. Then we have dietetics, which like I said, is what I'm majoring in. And this is for people who wanna become a registered dietitian. So I plan on counseling individuals in the future, working for community-based programs, working in schools with their lunch program, all that fun stuff. And the last one that Casey kind of highlighted at our Aggie Chocolate Factory is the food science department, which is for those individuals who are really interested in how we can modify and really engineer food. So that's really exciting. So here at the Aggie Ice Cream, the Aggie Creamery, I guess, we have over 20 different flavors that are rotated throughout. The reason why Aggie Ice Cream is so delicious is because it uses a higher percentage of buttermilk which makes the ice cream ridiculously smooth and creamy and just so delicious. So I'm gonna take you guys on a little tour of what their retail area looks like. So you come in and there are all the lists of the flavors. So here are all the flavors that they currently have. They also have information about the dairy and the USU. And then we have the ice cream flavors. Like I said, there are over 20 flavors the best one, in my opinion, is Aggie Blue Mint. It's mint ice cream that's flavored blue that features Oreos and chocolate bricks. And it's just so delicious. They also sell other items here. They sell the cheeses that are dairy producers. They sell milk. And they also sell some of the items that the Aggie Chocolate Factory produces. So if you guys decide to come up to Utah State, I would highly recommend getting a scoop at the Aggie Ice Cream. So what questions do you guys have? Hey, one just came in and they want to know if students get to help make Aggie ice cream. Yes, they can. So one of the big things at USU, specifically in the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences is hands-on application. The so students can, right behind where I showed you the ice cream flavors, there's some of our production facilities back there. So students can get that hands-on experience. There's many students who are in nutrition science or food science decide to work here at the Aggie Creamery. In fact, there are a couple of employees here that are all students. So it's student led um, under the direction of um, supervisors and some of the professors even who are involved in the ice cream making process. Awesome, thanks. Great, so if that's all that you guys have, um, I really hope to see you guys here up on campus. Go Aggies. Hi everyone, again, my name is Cheyenne Breeding and right now I'm on uh, the livestock side of our farm. So I'm here in the sheep and goat barn and I'm gonna flip my camera around for you guys to see. Here we have a few goats and some sheep and this is a really excited time of year um, for us to give tours because you guys get to see all the lambs and the goat kids, which is really exciting. We also have quite a few um, more sheep and more goats down in these barns. We have a few barns full of sheep and goats and the main purpose of these sheep and goats are for biomedical research purposes. So a lot of these sheep and goats are transgenic, which means they were genetically modified to have things like cystic fibrosis and atrial fibrillation, which helps us do research. Um, we can perform research and, on these animals and then apply that to the human medical side of things. Um, one thing that's really interesting is we have a goat that we call the million dollar goat and her name is Lily Star and she has all human antibodies. So this is essential for things like testing uh, vaccinations and different medical therapies on, on Lily Star so that we know how it will act in a human body and make sure it's safe for human, for human use. One other thing we have that's really interesting is we have quite a few spider silk goats here and they were bred to produce spider silk, 
which is one of the strongest materials in the world. And so we have student workers here on this farm and they milk the goats every day and they basically um, have this little filtration system that gets the spider silk. And we actually produce it and sell it to different people like the US military is looking into it because it's one of the strongest and their strongest materials and they are interested in using it for their things like their parachutes and their bulletproof vests. Um, Utah State was actually the first university to really um, make cloning animals more common at different land grant, land grant universities. So we actually had the first cloned donkey here at Utah State University. So a lot of these animals are actually clones of each other, which is really interesting to go see um, back here in these other barns. On the other side of me, um, outside, we have our beef unit. And a lot of those cattle are clones, again, for biomedical research purposes. And a lot of the students in the nutrition program who are studying animal nutrition will learn how to format a ration and feed it to these livestock and see how they grow and their production rates based on whatever um, whatever feed they, that they just rationed for these livestock. Um, one thing that Utah State really prides itself on is our, is our hands-on learning opportunities. So for students that are animal, dairy, and veterinary sciences students, even if you are in your undergrad year, it's your first semester here, you'll have times where you get to come out onto the farm and apply what you learned in class directly to the practices. So here we have a class, I think this is our sheep production class. So they just had lecture, they came out to the farm and they are applying what they just learned. One of uh, the favorite activities among animal science students here at Utah State is what we call sheep day. And really in the more early in the morning, students get on a bus and go to Wyoming and they basically just learn how to process sheep um, all day. So they're doing things like vaccinations and docking tails and shearing. Um, and that's definitely one of the favorite parts of their undergraduate experience here at Utah State. So this is our farm and I hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so there's one question and the student is wondering if there's opportunities for students to work on the farm. Yeah, there are plenty of opportunities for students to work here on the farm. Um, the farm employs quite a variety. On our farm, we have the beef unit, which is just a few yards that way. We have this livestock unit, sheep and goat unit. And then what we just saw was earlier today was the equine unit. So we have student workers who come here and feed, they help with vaccinations. Um, every day we have a lot of students here working on the farm. We also have students working in the labs um, on campus that apply what they use, like let's say in an animal reproduction lab, like where I work, we get to do things in the lab and come out here on the farm and work with the livestock as well. There are plenty of opportunities for student employment here at the farm. Uh, with that being the only question, I really love my time here at Utah State University and I know you guys will too. Go Aggies. Great, well, thank you to all of our student ambassadors for showing us around today. And thank you to you for joining us today. If you're interested in any of the programs we talked about, or if you want to learn more about our programs that we weren't able to get to, you can visit cas.usu.edu. That's C-A-A-S dot U-S-U dot E-D-U. We hope you'll join us here in the College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences at Utah State. And as everyone said, go Aggies. <laughs>